Let's talk about Judas. Judas. I kind of have mentioned in uh, comments about Judas before. People have asked me about the arrest and the Garden of Gethsemane and, and all of those, those areas. And whereas I don't have memories of the arrest itself, I do have memories of Judas the man and my belief after the arrest and my belief before the arrest. So I have an understanding of Judas the man and um, was not in any way, shape or, shape or form surprised when Judas ended up taking the money and turning him in. Um, I often hear from New Agers who want to make up stories around Judas and Judas's life that Judas was you know, and Jesus were creating a plot and a plan to, to do this and it was all part of the the overall scheme and so on and so forth and um, I do not believe any of that I don't believe any of that at all um, so you have to remember we were traveling from town to town to town to town and we were like a communal group we were, we were all working as one unit basically and we'd come into a town and people would give us donations and people would you know they bring food, they bring money, they bring clothing sometimes, they bring stuff to us that we need as we travel. Um, and because we were a communal group, the one person handled the money part of it. And that was Judas. Judas was the was the basically the treasurer of the group. That's the best way to describe him. He was the guy who handled the incoming money and how it was spent and how it was, you know, bought us more to sort of live on. And, you know, he was the one handling the money. I I have distinct, uh, I'd say memories, but it's more, it's more like impressions. But, I mean, I really truly believed that the money was being skimmed off of, that certain amount of that money was disappearing into somebody's pocket. And, um, and I have I have very strong memories of thinking that, um, but I you know I don't have proof, but I, I have very strong memories of what I thought of Judas before the the, the arrest. I, I did not like the man, and I didn't like the man for several reasons. But um, you also have to remember that John, Johannes Ben Zebedee, and his brother James uh, were known as the Sons of Thunder. So they, that's because they were hot-tempered. They were, they were very, like, you don't mess with Jesus, I'll kick your butt, you know? They were, they were hot-tempered people. <coughs> and I didn't get along with Judas because I thought that he was uh, ripping us off and, and, and immoral. Um, After the arrest, I, I have um, impressions that, uh, like I said, it wasn't at all a surprise that Judas sold Jeshua, you know, sold him for thirty pieces of silver. Um, I don't, I don't know about the the number. I I can't verify the number, but I can say this: it doesn't surprise me that he took the money and turned it in Jeshua because he was he was not a. He was not a reputable guy. He was someone who was literally, I, I truly believe, skimming off of our communal um, funds for his own gain. And when when Jeshua turned in, we, he, we pretty much never saw him again. People ask me about, did he hang himself? Um, I have no idea whether he hung himself. I don't. I don't have that story. I don't know that story. Um, now, did Johannes Ben Zebedee? I don't know. I don't have all of his memories. I just can only talk about the ones that I know. But um, Judas was an interesting man. Um, he was balding, uh, very big nose, um, short face. It was like when you looked at his face, it was very square in its features. Um um, dark-skinned, um, 
the hair, like I said, balding on the top, but came to the shoulder on the sides. Um, he had like basset hound eyes. You know, it, it, the, when, you, when I say that, it's like eyes that, that kind of had almost a sad look. They kind of tilted outward and down. Um, I mean, when you saw the man smile, he, he looked like a nice enough man, but um, he definitely had some intentions of making himself uh, better off for having known Jeshua financially. Um, he, when I when I when I just stop and put him in my mind, I feel. I feel like this is a slimy individual. This is someone who is out for himself, out to get you know his own thing. You know he doesn't really care about anybody or anything other than his own gain. Um, I I have no impression of what Jeshua thought of him. I I, I just. Um, I'm sure, knowing Johannes Ben Zebedee, I'm sure that Jeshua knew what John thought of him, because John was not a uh, a quiet individual. He he said what he thought, um, sometimes to John's detriment. He said what he thought, um, but as far as Judas is concerned, um, I don't think he was into some deep plot to and you know working with Jesus to to do what he did. I don't think that at, at all. And there's a there's a um, remote viewing group out there that claims that the whole crucifixion was a hoax and it was it wasn't it was a it was a you know conspiracy theory. You know, they have a conspiracy theory about the crucifixion. You can find conspiracy theories about anything, especially biblical topics. The New Agers brought up all kinds of stories. You can find a dozen, dozen or more stories about the crucifixion not being real. You can also find stories about the, the moon landing being faked. It's it's just it's just bull, you know. It's just not real, and um, Judas was not part of some scheme. Judas was just a guy who was out for himself and took the money and turned Jeshua in, and. Uh, the rest of us could never forgive him for that because he took Jeshua from us. And that was, it might not be the most loving thing that, that, that John did in his life by not ever forgiving him, but <clears throat> that's what I remember. So there you go. Uh, that's my story of Judas. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See you. Bye.